Funding for this program is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. So tonight's program is designed uh, around Italy. I'm playing on this wonderful Italian instrument, and so I thought that it would be a good idea to uh, program Italian pieces or pieces inspired by Italy, or they were written in Italy. So in the first half, I will be playing, uh, at the beginning of the program, three pieces by two Italian composers, Respighi and Sgambati. Uh, and in the middle, between those two pieces, I will play a canzone napolitana, a Neapolitan song, which is a, a very Italian piece, but written by a Hungarian composer, Franz Liszt, who loved Italy so much and is pretending to write a Neapolitan song even if he's actually making it up. So he's inventing, he's composing the, this Neapolitan song based on what he heard while he was in Naples. I will continue then with uh, two other pieces written by Liszt. The first one is called Sposalizio, which, which means wedding, and it's actually about a wonderful painting by Raffaello, which is still, you can still see this great painting uh, in Brera, at the Academy of Brera in Milan, in Italy. Um, and it's from a very, very interesting set called Years of Pilgrimage that Liszt wrote while he was in Italy, traveling in Italy and, uh, and enjoying the culture and the art in my country. And the last piece also uh, by Liszt of the first half, it's called Miserere du Trovatore. And in this case, again, Liszt is inspired by Italian art. And in this case, it's opera. It's the famous uh, uh, opera Trovatore by Giuseppe Verdi. And in this case, he, the Miserere du Trovatore is a very interesting experiment because actually in the real opera, you can see so many different things going on at the same time. There's choir that you cannot see on stage. There's the soprano that you can see, but there's also uh, a male singer uh, behind the stage that you can hear very, very distant. And so uh, Liszt's task was how to transfer all this in, in, for the keyboard, and he made an amazing job. And one of the techniques that he used is the, the technique called of the third hand. So basically, it's, it's like listening and visual, visualizing three hands on the keyboard, but uh, actually there's only two. So basically the effect is made by having the two hands running arpeggios throughout the whole keyboard and with the thumb of each hand you're playing or with an octave of the right hand, you're playing the melody in the middle of the arpeggios. So it's like listening to one hand playing the melody and two hands playing the arpeggios which is three hands, but the magic of Liszt made it possible for two hands only.
I'm Roberto Plano and I'm a concert pianist. Well, it's a long story. Uh, this is probably my, I don't know, 10th appearance in Austin. Uh, it's such a long and, and beautiful story. The first time, I remember clearly my first time here, uh, and that was 2002, I believe, so many, many years ago. And I, I won this, this big competition in Cleveland, uh, this big international competition for, for young pianists. And part of the prize was uh, getting concerts, many, many concerts in the United States. So I toured uh, extensively for, that, for those two years after winning that prize in 2001. And one of the prize concerts was here in Austin with the Austin Symphony. And I still remember it was Thanksgiving. There were pumpkins on that stage. I mean, on that part of the stage, I have still a picture behind those pumping pumpkins. And uh, I just met the most wonderful people here. And I don't know how, then they kept re-inviting me for so many times. And of course, I loved it every time. I designed the program right for this uh, event. Uh, so I'm Italian, I, I live now in the United States because I teach at Indiana University, but I moved to the States only four years ago. Uh, so I, I feel, of course, a huge connection to my country still. And, and the Fazioli is an Italian piano. So I thought what probably best, uh, what is best than uh, playing at an Italian program? Um, so I, at least for the first half, I will be playing pieces written by Italian composers or written by uh, other composers, in this case, list about Italy. So there's always something related to Italy. In the second part, instead, uh, I decided to pay homage to Beethoven because uh, this is a very, very important year for, for Beethoven. It's the 250th um, year after uh, his birth. And not only that, I felt that um, I had to um, use as much as possible the qualities of the piano. Uh, being like an orchestra, this is probably w the most powerful piano that you can find. And so uh, it's the perfect instrument, in my opinion, to replicate the sound of an orchestra. And so I decided to combine those things together with the performance of a Beethoven symphony transcribed for the piano by Liszt. Uh, so Franz Liszt, uh, as I told you, was really an influential composer for the piano. He felt that the piano was uh, the closest thing, possible thing to an orchestra because the piano could, in his mind, replicate the sounds of an orchestra or at least go very close to do that. And uh, the Fazioli 308 is the, the, probably the, be the best possible instrument to try to do so.
two years ago during an October performance that Roberto was playing at, he let us know that the old Baldwin piano that we had was actually starting to be a little tired and wasn't suitable for public performances anymore. So we started thinking about replacing it and going through some of the different options, buying a new one, buying a fully restored instrument, um, looking at what would cost to do that and what it would bring to, to the orchestra. And when we heard that a Fazioli F308 was available, all of a sudden we focused on that one. It was an opportunity to bring a fabulous instrument to the symphony and the community. And actually, Roberto Plano was the one who helped us find this piano because he had played it uh, when he rehearsed in, in the state of Washington at one time. And so he actually put us in contact with the people who owned the piano and helped facilitate uh, our ability to get this piano. So after having received the piano like this, we wanted to bring it out to the community. And we thought we would schedule a concert that we could televise relatively soon in the season that was very flexible and it would highlight the piano to its best abilities. And actually then from there when we, uh, Kevin and I got the idea to approach KSMQ and from there we decided that there was only one person that we wanted to come have come to Austin to play this piano and it's Roberto Plano. Roberto has been a good friend of the symphony for years, played with us a number of times in addition to that, as he's the one who really helped us find this Fazioli and tell us what a special piano this was. And so we reached out to Roberto and fortunately he was as excited to come here and play the piano as we are to have him here.
I know this brand very much. I own a Fazioli, not as big as this one, but much smaller. That was given to me right by Mr. Fazioli, who I know very well. And, uh, but the 308, which is this one, the, it's the largest piano made by Fazioli, and I think the largest piano in the world. Uh, there are not many of them. I believe there are seven or eight here in the United States. So um, I feel really fortunate to have this opportunity once more to play on such a great instrument. Well, you know, there, there are so many, many things that makes this piano um, unique, I would say. Probably the most important one is the soundboard. So the soundboard is a big piece of wood which is underneath the strings. And the soundboard is made by wood that um, comes from a very special forest in Northeast Italy in Val di Fiemme. And it's, it's basically red spruce. But the, the unbelievable thing is that this same red spruce was used by Stradivari to make his violins. And so this really makes the sound of um, the piano extraordinary. Not only, Mr. Fazioli told me personally that Fazioli brand, the Fazioli brand has the right to use the trees that grow in the middle, in the center, at the center of the forest, which means that in order to aim for the sun, they have to grow as straight as possible. And this makes the wood without knots. And that's why the sound is so pure and so clear. This is one of the reasons why this instrument is, is unbelievable. Part of the, of the secret also is Mr. Fazioli himself. Um, I really feel fortunate that I know him so well. It's like, I always tell my students, it's like knowing Mr. Steinway. You know, Steinway and Sons is probably the, the most well-known brand of pianos in the world. And it's like knowing Mr. Steinway and speaking with him about instruments. And so that's what I do with, with Mr. Fazioli and I feel fortunate um, about this. But I, I really believe that he's the secret also. Uh, he's a combination of so many things happening together at the same time. Uh, he has a degree as an engineer, but he's also a pianist. So he has a degree as a pianist and he has a degree as a composer.
I'm Stephen Ramsey, the artistic director and conductor of the Austin Symphony Orchestra. We're starting my 26th season with the Austin Symphony, and I'm so very pleased to be here and to talk about this concert with Roberto Plano and our brand new Fazioli Concert Grand Piano, um, and to talk a bit about uh, the rest of our season as well. I love the Austin Symphony Orchestra. These are people that have become family. Um, they're good friends. Um, they are very encouraging and approach our music making uh, with a, a great deal of earnest effort um, and are very um, careful about how we prepare concerts and uh, bring them to our audience. They're very serious about their music making. They understand that music is a wonderful language and they want to communicate to their audience what these composers um, are trying to say, the feelings they're trying to bring out in the music.
In the second half, I will be playing again. It, this is a transcription by Liszt, but in this case, I wanted to homage Beethoven for the 250th anniversary of his birth, uh, which is this year. And so I chose Beethoven's second symphony, which actually will be programmed by the Austin Symphony later this season. And, and so I, I decided that I wanted to play the piano version of that piece to homage Beethoven, but also to homage Liszt and um, his unbelievable skills as a transcriber. Uh, and again, as uh, another coincidence, he wrote this transcription while he was in Italy. He was in the Vatican, uh, composing on a very, very little upright piano. And it's amazing to think how he was able to transfer all the orchestral material uh, for the piano, working on such a very, very little instrument that for sure didn't give him the ideas of the orchestra instruments, but he had everything in mind. Um, and so that's why I wanted to play today this piece because I, I love Liszt, I love Beethoven. I think this is a great combination. And most of all, the fazioli is one of the few instruments that can really make the piano sound like an orchestra, exactly like uh, Liszt had in mind. And then the two anchors, uh, the one anchor I, I had the pleasure to play with members of the Austin Symphony Orchestra, and we decided to play the second movement of the beautiful Brahms Piano Quintet. Uh, it's the slow movement, the Andante Un Poco Adagio, which uh, is like a, a lullaby, one of the really most wonderful pieces of chamber music. And my uh, little anchor is Casta Diva. And again, we fly to Italy. Casta Diva is a melody written by Vincenzo Bellini from his very famous opera, Norma. And again, in this case, it's a piano transcription uh, that was made by Chopin initially for the left hand. Uh, then apparently something happened. He decided to work on other things and he kind of forgot about this. But a few years ago, a Chopin scholar, a Polish scholar, discovered the manuscript of this uh, piece and he reconstructed it, writing the right hand. And so I'm following that score. Uh, I changed a few things while listening to the aria sang by singers. I, I had ideas on how to play it. And so this is a version, this is my version of a reconstructed piece by Chopin, transcribed by a beautiful Bellini uh, aria. I hope you enjoy that.
right here. So transporting a grand piano actually is fairly simple. The legs are taken off and it's laid on the flat side onto a skid. And then that skid can be dollied around wherever it needs to go. During the trip, the piano was tied down inside the truck and then brought into here by putting it on a dolly and through the building out to the stage. At that point, we put two of the legs on and then we tilt it with a roller to put the third leg onto it.
I knew that it was an unbelievable instrument, but I was not sure how it would sound on stage. And I have to say this morning I started playing on it and immediately I felt that I was right, that, that I felt that this was really an extraordinary instrument. So one of the things that I was really interested in was that we get an instrument that's not just adequate to be here in the hall, but something that would be spectacular, that could really highlight the skills of all the artists we have. And uh, when this piano finally hit the stage and we heard it for the first time, I, I had goosebumps. It was just a wonderful moment of, of joy because that is what happened. The piano is going to be donated to the Austin School District by the Austin Symphony Orchestra, and that's going to happen soon. The piano will be uh, available for use by uh, members of the Austin Public School District, as well as members of the Austin community. And uh, then it will also be used by the Austin Symphony Orchestra for, for concerts, where we will bring in uh, concert pianists to play it.
What it means is that there are pianists from all over the world of on a really fine reputation that will beat a path to Austin, Minnesota to play this instrument. It will attract some very fine players. Well, Mark Andre Hamelin is one of the finest pianists in the world, and he will do the dedicatory concert. So our first concert of the new year will be Serenade for Strings, Dvorak's Serenade, with uh, William Grant Stills Serenade, and we'll welcome Dr. David Hayes to the stage, uh, someone who graduated from Austin High School and went on, got his doctorate in music, and is now concertmaster of the Springfield, Missouri Symphony. And he'll play the Bach E Major Violin Concerto, as well as Vivaldi's Winter uh, Movement from the Four Seasons. And then in April, we'll have the uh, official uh, dedication of this brand new Fazioli grand piano um, with Mark Andre Hamelin, um, Beethoven's third piano concerto, Beethoven's second symphony. We wrap up our celebration of the 250th anniversary of Beethoven's birth, and a new piece by Dr. Lee called Gie Niame, the Ghanan word for God of creation. Um, also, after that concert, on the 19th, uh, Mark will play uh, a recital where we'll hear just the piano um, in this beautiful hall. And he's doing, um, and the first half of his program is German and Austrian composers, Mozart, Beethoven, and C.P. Ebach. And the second half of the program is French music by um, Gabriel Faure and Maurice Ravel. Wonderful piece, uh, the, the Ravel. We're looking forward to, to hearing um, the contrast, uh, the national contrast between German and Austrian music and French uh, Ravel and Faure. Funding for this program is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.